Today is a very important day for our French Angora rabbits. We are going to breed both of our French Angora does to both of our French Angora bucks. We want to have spring babies, and right now it is the beginning of February. So if we breed them in the beginning of February, they'll have babies beginning of March, then those babies will be old enough to sell beginning of April, and then we'll be able to sell them through April and May. So we're going to have one last round of babies, two litters, um, born, and this will be our spring batch, and then we will and then end for the summer and begin breeding season again this fall. So currently we have two French Angora does. Both does are chocolates. One is a pedigreed and one isn't pedigreed, but that doesn't really matter. Um, and then we have two French Angora bucks. We have Sylvan, who is a um, blue magpie harlequin, and then Lucky, who is a Ryu, and they're both pedigreed as well. So my plan is to breed Sylvan and Sequoia together. They've had a litter before, and their babies were super cute and really pretty, and we're selling them right now. So we're going to have them be the mom and dad of a new litter again. And then Lucky and Juniper are going to be the parents of our second litter. So, so we want babies, and we know who we're going to breed to who, and now it's time to breed them. The general rule for breeding rabbits is you bring the girl to the boy's cage. But before we do that, I like to take out their food and water bowl so that it doesn't get spilled because there's food and water in there. And then they're going to run around and be chasing and bumping and tipping it over. So we don't want to waste good food and water. So we're going to take those out and then put the dough in. So everything is now out of Sylvan's cage. Um, I groomed everyone yesterday, so I did a health check on everyone. Their ears are good, don't have fur mites, they don't have other sicknesses, no snuffles, no problems, and their vents are all looking nice. And so I think we're going to breed them today. I so what we're going to be looking for as we're breeding these rabbits is we're going to look for the buck to mount the doe, kind of get on top of her, and then he's going to shake around a little bit. And and then sometimes he shakes for a long time trying to find the right spot. Sometimes it only takes a little bit. He'll get on and then either shake a lot or a little bit. Or, and then eventually he will fall off. Um, sometimes bucks can breed without falling off. But most of the time you know it's a successful breeding when they do fall off. So he'll shake and then he'll go and make a really big noise. Or sometimes they just fall off silently. And then they'll fall off like very dramatically. And it's kind of funny to watch. And that is one successful breeding. Most breeders like to get two or three successful fall-offs to make sure their does are bred. Um, sometimes one works just fine, and most of the time, so you can have babies with one fall-off, but if you get more, it just makes sure that it took. And does are induced ovulators, so they drop their eggs whenever they do get bred. So um, your doe could not get pregnant because she doesn't drop eggs whenever the buck breeds her. So just because your doe has been bred and had a fall off by the buck doesn't mean she's pregnant, but most likely it is. It's very rare that does don't drop eggs or whatever. So if you see a fall off and it worked, most likely she's bred. But so I put the doe in there, and the behavior you are seeing right now is called circling. Um, we have two cages connected, so they're more like doing a figure eight. But um, if they had had just one big cage, they, it's called circling. So the doe is going to run in a circle or more like a figure eight pattern because of the configuration of our cages. And then the buck is chasing her. Um, it does sometimes take a while for them to breed. So I'm just going to stand here and watch till we have two or three good fall offs. It is completely normal for the doe to grunt and snort and make all sorts of noises. Screaming is not very common, but it does happen. Sometimes the doe screams as she's being bred. Sometimes the buck screams as he is breeding. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're in pain. Sometimes rabbits just scream because they like to. Um, sometimes it does mean pain or something, but a lot of the times they just scream because they like to. So don't be alarmed if your rabbit does scream as they're breeding. Okay, so he's shaking, he's shaking, he's trying, he's trying. She may not lift. The tail of the doe has to lift in order for him to get where he's supposed to go. So she's in a good position. Her head is down. She's pl pressed flat to the ground. He's trying, he's trying, but he got off. He didn't fall off, so it's not a successful breeding. He's trying, he's trying, he's trying. Sometimes he has to nudge her a little bit to get her to get in the right position. I may at this point kind of move her a little bit just because it isn't working very good, so I might do that. But this is not a successful breeding. He's, he's trying her head, kind of. He's like, come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Here, Bubba. Here you go. Get on. All right, let's see if that works better. Yeah. Yeah. He's trying. He's trying. Did it work? Nope. No, nope, he's trying. So she may not let him breed. So he tried and failed to breed her. Uh... It is important whenever you are breeding rabbits to make sure, especially Angora rabbits, it is important to make sure that their bums are very groomed and short and clipped if you have an Angora rabbit with very long fur around their area, their bum area, then 
it can be hard for whatever the stuff to get to where it's supposed to be. So I make sure these all rabbits have been groomed very recently. They've been clipped recently. So um, they have all very short fur, but if your Angora rabbit does have long fur, it's important to make sure that the fur around their bum area with the boy and the girl are nice and short. So we got a fall off, yay! I had to hold her down a little bit, kind of like table breeding in the cage. She wasn't really wanting to breed like by herself, so I just kind of forced her to. But we did get a successful fall off, and I am very happy. I'm hoping to get at least one more, hopefully maybe two or three more, so that we have a total of around three successful fall offs. Um, and then we will breed the other two. So we got our second fall off, and he was grooming her. It was so cute. Um, so I did have to hold her. I don't like holding rabbits down to breed. I feel like I just, you know, if they can do it naturally, then that's, like, great. And, um, but does do like to be rebred. They are most receptive, and they're ready to be rebred soon after they have babies. But it's been about, like, seven or eight weeks since she's had babies. Um, so that might be the reason why she doesn't want to breed as readily as she would have if she just had babies. The reason we didn't rebreed her right away is because we didn't need that many French Angora babies. Um, we sell our babies and we had 13 born, so I didn't think I could sell 13 in all, in eight weeks. And, and then we'd have another litter of, I hope, maybe 13 then. So that'd be just too many Angoras to sell. So... I decided to wait until we we're almost sold of the big guys and now we're gonna have another two litters so we've had two fall offs and i think i'm going to start breeding the other two and then kind of keep an ear open for a third fall off all the snorting and grunting that comes with it and then i'll force them to do a third one if that doesn't happen naturally and then we'll have three or maybe four if i didn't miss the one that they did naturally so um I'm going to, because the third one does take usually longer than the first two. First two happen usually pretty quick, and then the third one will take longer, I've noticed. So I'm going to start breeding the other two pair of rabbits, and then come back to these guys. So I was noticing that Juniper's fur is pretty long. So I ended up clipping her bum very short. Um, this is her tail, and so it's nice and short down there and all along here so that it'll be much easier for the buck to get to her and get his stuff where it needs to be and then we'll have babies in a month so I'm super excited and now we're gonna put her in with Lucky. All right they're together Lucky's rear is already very short so um we're good there. Lucky has tried to breed does before but we accidentally left their fur too long and so the breeding didn't take but we have had him breed rabbits before, so he isn't completely new. It just didn't take. Um, but he did do a pretty good job, so we'll see what happens. Yay! We got our first fall off! She was laying still. Her head was really pressed down to the floor. Her tail, I guess, was raised. I couldn't tell. But we got our first fall off. She's snorting a lot and kind of attacking him. Not, like, meanly, but, like, kind of, like, half-hearted attacks. Not, like, like gonna kill you attacks, but kind of, like, short and quick. Um... But we got a first fall off, so that's good. And hopefully we get two more. I can, need, if I need to, up. Oh. All right, yeah. Kind of worrying, but I, I don't know. See, now she's doing good. So let's see. Let's see. He's trying. It didn't work. So I may start trying to hold her down if she keeps being super attacky and violent. But she's seeming to calm down, which is good. So, Yeah. Now they're going to snuggle for a little bit. I'm not going to leave them alone together. I'm going to, you know how Sequoia and Silva and I left alone together because she wasn't attacking him or anything. But I don't really feel comfortable leaving him and her alone right now. So I'm just going to keep a constant eye on everything. And it seems like everything's going pretty good now. So hopefully it continues to go that way. Second fall off just happened all by itself naturally. I was holding her down and he was trying and it didn't work. So I let him go. And then she stayed still and got him. And so we have two fall offs. I could stop now. I do really want to get a third one. She is making preliminary attacks towards him, kind of. Um, but nothing really bad or serious. So, I mean, I see rabbits fighting in our colony off and on sometimes whenever they're breeding or something. So, I'm not, I don't know, I don't know if I'm more callous towards fighting than other people, but I'm not really worried. Um, so, just keep waiting. Hopefully we can get one more from them. Alright, she's laying down like she's tired, so I think this is two is all we're going to get from them. 
um, today, so I'm gonna put her back in her cage, which is right next door, and maybe we'll try again tomorrow. So back on Sylvan and Sequoia, he was trying, but she's she's got herself backed up against the cage wall, so he can't get to her. He's, you know, trying to squish her out of the way. So this is an unsuccessful fall off. He's trying, he's trying, but it isn't working. He's trying, but it's not working, and then he'll just climb off. So that is not a successful fall off. That. All right. So I just forced um. Sylvan to get a third fall off. I held Sequoia still um, and then let him have at it and we got a third one. So that is three fall offs for this pair and two for the other pair and I think we're going to call it quits for today. Yay! So we finished breeding both pairs of rabbits today. Um, we got two fall offs from these people uh, which is pretty good and then three from the other pair which I'm very very pleased about. I'm thinking of trying and rebreeding them again tomorrow. The amount of breedings doesn't affect the amount of babies. It just increases the chance of it actually get, catching and making babies. So I won't be have, making more babies. I'll just be increasing the chance that we do have babies. So um, yeah, I am really excited. And this was a great today. We had no injuries. We had many fall offs. And um, we're going to breed, do this exactly again tomorrow. And so I will see you then. So it is the next day. We are breeding for the second time, just in case the first time didn't take. And it looks like she is not lifting for him. We have been trying for several, several minutes with these two. And while she's been in the right position, and I've kind of had to hold her still sometimes, and sometimes she did it by herself, all the time he's been trying and trying and trying and shaking and shaking, but he has never fallen off. And her tail isn't in the right position. She isn't lifting up. So I think she is pregnant and that she knows she's pregnant and he's kind of being half-hearted about it. So he might be able to smell that on her as well that she's pregnant already. So I think the three fall-offs we got yesterday are all we're going to get. And I'm going to assume that Sequoia is indeed pregnant. We are kind of having a similar situation with these two. Lucky is not wanting to breed. Um, she's been laying down and kind of sometimes, you know, being kind of like he could breed if he wanted to. Sometimes I've even tried holding her down for him and putting him on her. He is just not acting interested in breeding. He is just, you know, not. He's sniffing her a little bit and then not interested. So he might be smelling that she's pregnant. She might know she's pregnant. She isn't acting, you know, super like she wants to be bred. She has been snorting a little bit, but she hasn't been attacking him or anything. So I'm going to assume that the two fall-offs we got yesterday are the only two we're going to get and that she is already pregnant from those two. So we won't really know for sure if they are pregnant or not until they give birth. You can do things like palpating, but that's kind of really hard sometimes and you have to have a very good practice with it and I'm not very good at palpating. We got three good fall-offs and two good fall-offs in our first breeding and then today we got none from either. So I'm going to assume that our does are both pregnant and put nest boxes in and all that good stuff and then expect babies in about a month. So yeah, that is how I breed my Angora rabbits, and that is how we make baby French Angoras. They are going to be so cute when they're born. I'm so excited.